Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the academic procession and the Chancellor. I declare that the 610th Convocation of McMaster University for the conferring of degrees is now in session. Please be seated. Sounds like a wave. Good afternoon. My name is Susan Denberg. I'm Executive Vice Dean and Associate Vice President Academic in the Faculty of Health Sciences at McMaster University. This afternoon, I have the great pleasure of acting as your Master of Ceremonies and of welcoming all of you, graduates, guests, to this convocation ceremony. On behalf of the university, I would like to recognize and acknowledge that we meet today on the traditional territories of the Mississauga and Haudenosaunee nations and with the lands protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. We must remember that we all have a role in upholding the spirit of the agreement, which urged for the peaceable sharing of Earth's resources. We must also not forget that merely acknowledging our presence on these traditional lands is only a small step on our shared path to reconciliation. I challenge you to consider how you can foster reconciliation among the many peoples that inhabit these lands. I would like to start today's proceedings by acknowledging some of the notable leaders joining me on stage today. Our Chancellor, Ms. Sante Smith. President and Vice Chancellor, Dr. David Farrar. Dean and Vice President of the Faculty of Health Sciences, Dr. Paulo Byrne. Associate and Assistant Deans, 
chairs, faculty members, and honored guests. Before we start our formal program, may I ask everyone in the hall to switch off any electronic device that may ring or beep during the ceremony. I would like to now call upon our Chancellor, Ms. Sante Smith, to deliver the Thanksgiving address and make her own welcoming remarks. Sego, sewa guego, greetings everyone. Wat kwindu walado, welcome. Honored guests, staff, faculty, families, friends, and most importantly, graduates. This is an exciting day for all of you who have graduated, who are graduating today, as well as for all of the people who supported you and stood behind you, and in many cases played a key role in you being here today. You have achieved a great deal to get here, and you should be very proud of your success. I look forward to what a bright future you might bring for all. Congratulations, and please enjoy the ceremony. Before we begin, as a part of that, uh, of being and sitting in gratitude, I'd like to share the words before all else. And I will describe a little bit about the words after. Se wata hosio ne got ne gali wessa ne ona ne angali ho hetste ne gana wala dancerla. These are words of thanksgiving that help to bring our hearts and minds together to acknowledge, give thanks, affirm our interdependencies and interconnections, cultivate compassion and kindness and recognize our responsibilities for sustaining and living in balance and peace with the creative universe. Let us acknowledge those of us in our families and friends who may be sick or ill, that these words also offer them peace in their minds and hearts. We give greetings and thanks to the people our ancestors, our family, and friends, so be it in our minds. We give our greetings and gratitude to Mother Earth, for she provides us with everything that we need to survive and thrive, so be it in our minds. We give thanks to the waters, from the oceans to the streams, to the waters flowing in our body. Water is life, so be it in our minds. We give thanks to the fish life, who help to purify the water and provide us with nourishment so be it in our minds. We give thanks and greetings to all of the plants, from the grasses to the medicines that help to purify and strengthen our bodies. Now our minds are one. We give thanks to all of the insects who help to pollinate the plants, so be it in our minds. We give greetings and thanks for all of the sustenance foods, so be it in our minds. We give thanks to all of the fruit life who help to nourish our body. So be it in our minds. We give thanks and greetings to all of the animals who sacrifice their lives so that we can survive. They sustain us and they are our teachers. So be it in our minds. 
Dai ti nuvolaro ne zit don ongu a. Eto ne onto hage ne naguat ni gula. We give our greetings and gratitude to the birds whose beautiful singing uplift our spirit, bring peace and calm to our hearts. Now our minds are one. Daieti nuvolaro ne galunda ongu a. Eto na yonto hage ne naguat ni gula. We give thanks to all of the trees. We cannot live without the oxygen that they provide. Their roots and sap provide nourishment and cleansing for our body, so be it in our minds. We give thanks and acknowledgement to the circulating winds who travel the earth, bringing new life and breath, so be it in our minds. Daieti nuvolaro ne ladiwerlas, eto ne yontohage ne naguat nigula. We give thanks and greetings to the grandfather thunderers for purifying the air and awakening the earth and awakening us, so be it in our minds. Dazi dawanuvolaro ne onjongeni galakwa, eto ne yontohage ne naguat nigula. We give greetings to the eldest brother son who appears consistently each morning to provide sunshine, protection, and sustenance for all living things. So be it in our minds. We give thanks and greetings to our grandmother Moon for her powerful pull on our waters and her connection to birth. So be it in our minds. Daieti nuvolaro ne yo zi sto war lunio, eto na yonto hoge ne naguat nigula. We give acknowledgement and greetings to the stars and to the cosmos for providing us with guidance and direction, so be it in our minds. Daieti nuvolaro ne de yonkiadado, eto na yonto hoge ne naguat nigula. We give thanks to our protectors, our spiritual guardians, who provide clarity of mind and provide peace to our hearts. Now our minds are one. Datsi dewanuvalaro ne sungwayondiso eto nayontohage ne naguat nigula. We give greetings to all of creation, the great spirit, the creative energy that lives in everything and everywhere. So be it in our minds. Da eto ni gawanige. Da eto. Nyawe. Thank you for listening to those words that give us context that aims to unify our hearts and minds in humble acknowledgement of the immensity of the creative living universe, which we are a very small part of. It provides us with daily context of our interdependence and responsibilities in upholding balance, care, and gratitude. We are grateful to be here today in acknowledgement and celebration of all of your achievements, especially through the challenging times of the pandemic. Let us all honor the work that has been done. Congratulations. Please enjoy the ceremony. I would like now to introduce Dr. Paul O'Byrne, Dean and Vice President of the Faculty of Health Sciences, who will be presenting our honorary degree recipient. Chancellor Smith, by the authority of the Senate of McMaster University, I have the honor to present James Jimmy Volnick. Jimmy Volnick, who spent the first 37 years of his life living under apartheid in South Africa, has become an internationally 
recognized leader in the field of evidence-based medicine. A longtime professor in the Department of Global Health at Stellenbosch University in South Africa, he served as Dean of the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences from 2011 to 2021. This is the same university that four decades prior rejected his application to study there because of the color of his skin. He was also the founding director of the Cochrane South Africa at the invitation of the South African Medical Research Council, and he guided Cochrane South Africa to become a leader in the promotion and proliferation of evidence-based medicine in order to make more healthcare decisions based on reliable evidence rather than tradition or opinion. Dr. Volmink was the founding director of research and analysis at Global Health Council in Washington, DC, and was the Glaxo Welcome Chair of Primary Healthcare at the University of Cape Town. Dr. Volmink began his career as a general practitioner caring for communities in rural, rural Swaziland, now Estatwatini, where he was the only physician for 50,000 people. He then fulfilled similar roles in townships near Cape Town. Throughout his career, he has combined clinical work with research and innovation that has produced more than 200 co-authored publications on topics including interventions for tuberculosis, HIV AIDS, and cardiovascular diseases, promoting evidence-based decision-making, addressing health and social inequities, and building research capacity on the African continent. His systematic review of the directly observed therapy short course treatment for TB, for example, generated international debate and led to fundamental changes in the way we treat that disease today. Professor Volmink has also been instrumental in establishing health research centers across South Africa while making contributions beyond his home nation. He has served, for example, on committees and advisory boards with institutions, including the World Health Organization, the Consort Equity Advisory Board, and the Evidence for Equity Nutrition Stakeholder Panel at the University of Ottawa. The recipient of numerous honors at Stellenbosch University, including the Lifetime Chancellor's Award, Dr. Volmink is, elected, is an elected member of the Academy of Science of South Africa and a fellow of the Royal College of Physicians of Edinburgh. He received the Leverhulme Medal from the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine, as well as a recognition award for his contributions to evidence-based healthcare in Africa and a President's Lifetime Achievement Award from the South African Medical Research Council. More recently, KU Leuven in Belgium presented Dr. Volmink with an honorary doctorate in recognition of his work to promote human dignity and his contributions to science and practice to improve health and well-being. Chancellor Smith, I am pleased to present to you an individual the South African Medical Research Council has called Africa's father of evidence-based healthcare, so that you may confer upon James Volmick the degree of Doctor of Science, honoris causa. Jimmy Volmick, by the authority of McMaster University Senate, I have the great pleasure to confer upon you the degree Doctor of Science Honoris Causa in McMaster University with all the rights and privileges pertaining to that degree. to invite Dr. Volmick to deliver the convocation address.
Madam Chancellor, President Farrar, honored guests, graduates, family, and friends, I bring you warm greetings from South Africa and my home institution, Stellenbosch University. For more than three decades, I have cherished the dream of visiting the birthplace of evidence-based medicine. However, not in my wildest imaginations did I ever anticipate that this long-awaited visit would occur in response to a letter from the president of McMaster offering me an honorary doctorate. I am deeply humbled to have been considered worthy of an honor of such magnitude from one of the world's leading academic institutions. This is an honor I would like to share with those through whose encouragement and support the achievements for which I am being recognized today have been enabled. These include my family, particularly my parents, who sacrificed so much. Friends, teachers, mentors, and colleagues. I especially wish to acknowledge my wife, Blossom, for her unfailing support over the years, as well as my dear friends and inspiring collaborators, Dr. Patrice Machaba and Dr. Lahana Tavani. I'm thrilled that they are here today to witness and celebrate this special occasion with me. Now to the graduates. Graduates, this is, of course, your day. Congratulations on your success. The road you have traveled has been long and difficult. And you have persevered and reached your goal. Well done. We cannot be more proud of you, and we wish you all the very best for the future. Now, much has, has changed in healthcare since I graduated from medical school in 1982. Evidence-based medicine pioneer, pioneered by key individuals from this fine institution was introduced as a bold new paradigm for making healthcare decisions with far-reaching impact on health professional training and practice worldwide. An online poll of global readers of the British Medical Journal conducted in 2007 ranked EBM seventh among the 15 most important milestones that shaped modern medicine. More broadly, EBM has helped improve how health policy is being made at the highest level globally, and has also challenged thinking about the nature of evidence in fields beyond health, including education, criminal justice, and the social sciences. I would have loved to be able to attend one of the popular courses run by McMaster in the early days of the EBM movement, but such opportunities always seem to evade me. However, I, I did make a special effort to soak up as much of the relevant literature appearing at the time and occasionally had the privilege of listening to some of the great EBM trailblazers speak at international conferences. They were all impressively bright people 
and gifted communicators. But most striking of all was the way these attributes were intertwined with other outstanding qualities, such as humility, inclusion, and a generosity of spirit, which promoted teamwork and collaboration. During the ensuing years, I came to know subsequent cohorts of GOC colleagues from McMaster and witnessed the same combination of ad admirable characteristics I had first seen in the founders of EBM being reflected in many of their protégés. This often brought to my mind the words of the late, great Nelson Mandela. Quote, a good head and good heart are always a formidable combination. But when you add to that a literate tongue or pen, then you have something very special. Beyond EBM, enormous advances in the, med the biomedical sciences have, of course, also taken place since I left medical school. We now have a better understanding of biological processes to which McMaster has contributed. And these have led to new insights into disease mechanisms and a substantial expansion of the scientific armamentarium for fighting disease. As newly minted healthcare professionals, you will have at your disposal increasingly sophisticated knowledge, technologies, and skills for research and practice. The omics revolution, big data, 3D printing, point of care diagnostics, artificial intelligence, robotics, and brain computer interfacing, to name but a few, offer exciting possibilities for improving health and extending the lifespan. Given this exciting progress in the medical and health sciences, there couldn't be a more exciting time to be a healthcare provider or medical scientist. And yet, there remains a question that lingers. How do we ensure these wonderful new scientific and technological developments will benefit those most in need of care? In this regard, it is perhaps fitting to recall an important debate from back in 19th century Germany. Robert Koch had discovered the bacterium causing tuberculosis, which provided early evidence for the validity of the germ theory of disease. For this finding, he received a Nobel Prize in 1905. At the time, it was widely believed that through this new discovery, TB would soon be consigned to the ash heap of history. All that remained now was to develop a new TB, a T, a TB vaccine and effective drugs for treating the disease. Both have been available for almost a century. That was the one half of the debate. The other side was represented by Rudolf Virchow, an eminent scientist in his own right who in later years came to be recognized as the father of modern pathology. Virchow felt that the germ theory oversimplified the causes of disease, diseases such as TB. Instead, he believed in the preeminence of social conditions of living as the basis of much ill health. One of the remarks Virchow is remembered for is the following, 
quote, physicians are the natural attorneys of the poor and social problems fall to a large extent within their jurisdiction. He also said, if medicine was really to accomplish its great task, it must intervene in political and social life. So how did the medical establishment of the day respond to Virchow's insights? Well, he got banished from the Charité, the famous academic hospital in Berlin, where he conducted much of his research and did his teaching and practice. Today, I ask myself, whose arguments have stood the test of time? Is it Koch's or is it Verkar's? I leave the question to you to ponder on. What I can do is offer you some facts about tuberculosis in 2022. According to the World Health Organization, TB still ranks as one of the top infectious disease killers globally, with an estimated 10 million cases and 2 million deaths worldwide. Almost all cases and deaths from TB occur among poor and marginalized people, mostly in low and middle income countries. Now friends, I am a member of the first generation of my family to have completed high school. And although I've enjoyed some extraordinary educational opportunities and privileges, I have not forgotten the indignity of growing up in poverty. It has therefore always bothered me that so many people today are still being deprived of the education, the living conditions, and the health care they need to enjoy good health and well-being. And they continue to be robbed of a fair chance to realize their full potential, despite often having brilliant talent. Current economic trends demonstrate increasing differentials in income and wealth globally. Such inequalities undermine social cohesion and generate resentment in society, making the world a more unsafe, indeed a more dangerous place for us all. Social and economic inequalities also drive disparities in health and well-being and determine the quantity and the quality of health care people receive. And here's the thing. Many of these inequalities are demonstrably avoidable, unfair, and unjust. I believe these issues should be the concern of every healthcare provider. It is our job to promote health and not merely to treat disease. While a, a combined effort from all of society will, be, will undoubtedly be needed to achieve health for everyone, I do have some thoughts in closing to leave with you about how we, as healthcare practitioners, can help. First, we can respect and promote human dignity in every encounter we have with our patients. Humans have an intrinsic need for dignity as a basic element of well-being. Patients will often value their healthcare providers' acts of humanity, kindness, and compassion more than their technical expertise. Demonstrating humility and acknowledging uncertainty are also critical for advancing patient dignity. 
Humility invites dialogue, providing patients a greater voice in the decision-making process. It also enables healthcare practitioners to recognize and respect the expertise of their colleagues, which is critical for collegial relationships and multidisciplinary teams to flourish. Humility also makes it easier for us to admit our mistakes, which is critical to learning. It can therefore help to improve the quality of care and lead to better patient outcomes. The second way we can advance health is by acknowledging more openly the impact of living conditions on the health of our patients. Every day in clinics and hospitals, doctors, nurses, and other practitioners are exposed to human suffering related to destructive social, economic, and political forces in society. We should never become desensitized to this cause-effect relationship. Dishing out chemical and technical cures while averting our gaze from the roots of our patients' conditions is often what we do, but we can do better. As Maya Angelou has said, do the best you can until you know better. Then, when you know better, do better. The third and final way I believe we can make a difference is through practicing advocacy. By this I mean we can, we can and should use our individual and combined voices to advocate, advocate for solutions to the upstream conditions affecting health. Putting it differently, we can join the fight to improve the living conditions of our patients. As healthcare practitioners, we have enormous social capital. Let's use it for the benefit of our patients and of society as a whole. The mission of healthcare training institutions such as McMaster and other great institutions is not only to produce good clinicians, teachers, and scientists, it's also to produce good citizens, good people, and change makers. By all means, let us continue to defend the integrity of science. Let us continue to generate new knowledge, and let us continue to promote evidence-based decision-making. But let us not be lulled into thinking that science and healthcare alone can achieve health equity. If health is primarily determined by social and economic factors, then advancing social justice is the key to good health. As citizens, we must fight for policies that create more and better jobs, better education, and better living conditions for everyone. We must fight to end gender inequality and racism and other structural inequalities. And we must refuse to allow corporate greed and corruption in any shape or form to continue unchecked. Perhaps the time has come for a new EBM, an equity-based movement, in, and include everyone in that movement who cares about making our world a better place. Let us move forward together with a mission to build a more just, healthier, and happier world. Our futures and the futures of our children depend on it. So my friends, thank you for your attention this afternoon. And graduates, once again, best wishes to you all. Thank you.
Thank you so very much, Jimmy, Dr. Volmink, for incredibly inspiring words, very timely, and I'm sure uh, influential to our graduates. Dr. David Farrar will now come forward to present the graduates to our chancellor to admission for their degree. Will the graduates please stand? It's great to see you all in person. Madam Chancellor, on behalf of the McMaster University Senate, I present to you these candidates and those in absentia in order that you may confer the appropriate degrees upon them, and I bear witness that they are worthy and suitable. Graduates. By my authority and that of the McMaster University Senate, I have the great pleasure to admit to those before me today and those in absentia to their individual degrees at McMaster University with all the rights and privileges pertaining to those degrees. My sincere congratulations to you all. Please be seated. Graduates, graduates, you have transformed. I now invite each of you to join me on the stage so that the Chancellor and I may welcome you to the McMaster Community of Scholars. I'm looking forward to shaking your hand or bumping fists or touching elbows or simply acknowledging your great accomplishments without touching. Our Chancellor will acknowledge your great accomplishments without touching. Thank you. Honored guests, so that each graduate's name may be heard, it would be appreciated if during the presentation of the graduates you'd hold your collective applause to the end of each category. Thank you. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduate of the degree Doctor of Philosophy. Christina Klobuchar. Yuen Yi Madeline Tong. Derek. Derek Manis.
Joanna Colleen Dion. Shauna Adelshire. Hassam Mararati. Kanwal Singh. John Ross Burbensky. Enid Kathleen Selkirk. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Master of Science. Mercedes Anne Di Bernardo. Daniel James Wilson Pallant. Emmanuel Harrison Sakaraya. Adriana Tetenich. Sadia Nauman. Travis Murphy. Caleb Scott, D Dylan Scott. Stephanie Smulski. James Bernard Finer. Madeline Leppard. Yagane Yousefi. Parabnor Kar Behans. Alexia Marie D'Angelo. Navia Jitesh Dividi. Camille Grieve. Olivia Howard. Grace McCaskill. Mariam Malik. Davisha Persod Maharaja. Erica Privil. Shireen Kaur Rikraj. Alicia Marie Schaefer. Savannah Jordan Smith. Aaron Elizabeth Tatarnik. Cesarian. Gagatharan Andrea Joan Hebert Sarah Wasim
Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the Master of Science, Speech, Language, Pathology. Manur Arshad. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Master of Public Health. Alicia Autry. Valerie Christina Bishop. Stephanie Clayton. Isa Jalil. Amelia Jean McFadden Keenan. Alyssa Basilka Kostopoulos. Sarah Jennifer Logler Clark. Yaha Diakeo Mamudi. Genevieve Elizabeth Pennington. Jacqueline Natalie Rinchima. Pownies Sadri. Erica Nicole Stone. Wei Yi Xie. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Doctor of Medicine. Roya Akbari. Takhlik Amir. Selina Marie Sylvie Arnold. Zachary Barkhouse. Miles Norman Benayon. Cynthia Chan. Jessica Wei Yun Chi. Jordana Compagnone. Michael Kumba. Jasmine Emily Ann Cunningham. Eve Deck. Michael Thomas A. Dennis. Angela Dong. Victoria Forcina. Amy Freeman. Mark Grinberg. Danielle Harris.
Alexandra Hillebrand. Stephanie Johnston. Jeremiah Chan Yang Ju. Shamez Katra. <laughs> Anne Elizabeth Keller. Gavinjit Singh Clare. Lehini Krishna Lachipatula. So Jiong Li. Julian Lee. Sabrina Lin. Marina Liu. Jane Luft. Yufei Ma. Lisa Miney. Grace Martin. Yasna Mehdian. Alexandros Muratidis. Patrick Murphy. Puru Panchal. Prasida uh, Pathasarati. Christopher Anthony Povolo. Preksha Radhod. Angelica Rivas. Hanya Sheikh. Maz Shanjer. Tia Angela Vine. Michael Vu. Amy Yu Riyun Wang. Kai Man Shu. Samantha Yim. Raymond Yu. Jamie Jen. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Health Sciences, Midwifery. Jocelyn Dawn Black. Anne Bowen. Carrie D'Souza. Claudia Di Clemente. Madeline Donaldson. Elise Enns.
Aaron Frey. Isabella Gyorshkova. Mary Goodwin. Krista Gowan. Eliza Hasselink. Kirsten Ingram. Xing Ma. Olivia Marquez. Jessica Martin. Carolyn Mellon. Juliana New. Eli Noonan. Brianne O'Shaughnessy. Sarah Pellegrino. Abigail Roseboro. Cassandra Santoni. Tuka Shamke. Mackenzie Shaw. Victoria Taylor. Sydney Segulis. Emma Witkowski. Emily Ann Worsley. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Honors Bachelor of Health Sciences. Zain Sam Abdul Rahman. Manoor Adnan. Kajol Agarwal. Roshan Ahmed. Ali Amar Al Hamuzi, Hisham Al Qasim, Rifa Fatima Ali, Sam Ayman Ali, Rachel Elizabeth Altman. Anaka Kumari Anand. Selena Thenrell Antony. Uniza Asad Ola. Ashley Abba Assam. Ukshana Augustine. Maria Azab. Dong Ba. Claire Sydney Jackson Barclay. 
Ala Adel Benghizi. Kurti Bakta. Lauren Olivia Birchina. Benjamin Walker Blackman. Zoe Boland. Tristan Cole Bombery. Benjamin Arnold Brakel. Jacob Andrew Bresselin. Madison Victoria Ann Campbell. Daniela Carbonari. Claudia Carnile. Alessana Kayla Carmona. Denise Bukwiran Katakutan. Lavette Chan. Osman Chang. Alex Chen. Crystal Chen. Eva Chen. Jesslyn Yijia Chen. Natalie Shuyu Chen. Leora Marie Chiramonte. Terry Cho. Esther Chow. Christy Yin Chi Chow. Alexandra Winglin Chu. Jake Colotti. Annabella Cotovio. Danielle Dogger. Sabrina Caitlin Dam. Zane Dowdy. Michaela R. Davies. Claire Meredith Daw McCord. Ethiga Namasha Da Silva. Danielle Della Libera. Devanchi Desai. Saran Desta. Sahaj Kaur Dillon. Samantha Yiming Dong. Ryan D'Souza. Ranmi Kaur Dulai. Gwen Elizabeth Eagle. Zoe Lily Elhello. Asma Elwerfully. Amro Khaled Elferi. Carly Danielle Endress. Fadi Man Estifo. Sophia Anna Farkas. Michelle Rose Fattori. 
Rasta Fayazi. Yi Yang Fei. Ron Galeov. Angel Gao. Erwa Talwaska Ghazi. Teja Patricia Gibbons. Dea Cor Gill. Janeska Gill. Sahib Joth Gill. Simran Kaur Gill. Simrat Kaur Gill. Tyler Jordan Gilman. Simona Gindin. Justin David Giordano. Alessio Matteo Giovannoni. Minwen Gong. Kennedy Marguerite Lockhart Graham. Jillian Rosalind Grant Allen. Alexa Isabel Gruber. Omar Gulam. Janani Gunabella Singham. Vipul Gupta. Tenzin Galtzen. Dominic Haas. Julia Ahab Habashi. <laughs> Mackenzie Hagstrom. <laughs> Tiffany Gabriella Harianto. <laughs> Amanda Carolyn Hedrick. Leah Catherine Heinen. Elizabeth Hilsentager. Heidi Hyung Yi Ho. Brock Kent Hoard. Jessica Holmes. Alexa Taylor Hookie. Zarin Tasneem Hossein. Venteng Hu. Nicholas Jaren Hua. Louise Rufeng Huang. Serena Huang. Catherine He. Caitlin Chantal Hui. Sanjum Kaur Hunjan. Ellen Claire Huynh. Sarah Ibrahim. Hamna Imtiaz. Carmina Albertine Tan Isidoro. Basil Issa.
Sofia Ivanisevic. Amanda Jack. Abigail Liz Jacob. Dia Juti. Shabrit Kaur Johal. Papira Johara Pukar. Zeest Kadri. Yejin Kang. Yifan Kang. Isha Karia. Anna Katakena. Abru Kaur. Sharuk Khan. Ali Kosrabi. Gallum King. Danya Kohler. Emma Coster. Grace Kwong. Yakyun Kwon. Julia Labrachosa. Benjamin Gordon LaRock. Adele Lee. Sharon Grace Lim. Louise Madeline Limoges. Longshi Lin. Brandon Long Liu. Grace Chengyu Liu. Liberty Liu. Ruth Jia Eng Yu. Chloe Joy Locke. Jia Hui Lo. Ashley Heron Ma. Sean Joseph Madden. Sarish Athar Masood. Karishma Mehta. Ella McClossick. Ijal Kishore Mystery. Natalie Marie Moncada. Jessica Sylvia Moreira. Myron Mitchell Moskalik. Corinne Moss. Gurinder Singh Multani. Abira Nataraja. Mohammed Hassan Nasser. Brenda Nkange. <laughs> Shelly Palchik. Emily Marie Panousis. Nandana Paruk. Jane Park. 
Janil Patel. Shrusti Patel. Zeal Ravindrabai Patel. Zinal Patel. Haley Nadine Patrick. Caitlin Marie Patterson. Mitchell William Pellerin. Dinesh Paramakumar. Alicia Petrushakevich. Andy Fan. Mariana Q. Algina Rahat Qureshi. Dhruv Rathod. Daniel Rayner. Michelle Marie Dharma Rianto. Holly Rachel Rodney. Shauna Patricia Rogers. Hannah Rose Telegatos Rosales. Amitha Rosario. Emma Catherine Souter Ruby. Denise Anna Sabak. Anjali Lord Kaur Sakdeva. Ramika Sakdeva. Grahenya Sachidanadan. Hadia Salim. Bethel Sampson. Abby Catherine Carolyn Saunders. Rania Saxena. Francis Ann Sheepers. Shannon Gwyneth Eliza Shearer. Lakshi Selvaratnam. <laughs> Tyler Alexander Sito. Neha Shah. Nisarg Samir Shah. Dhruv Sharma. Mariam Nader Shanuda. Mahek B. Shergal. Yebin Chin. Nima Siddiqui. Angad Singh. Eric C2. Rachel Jesse Snellgrove. Gina So. Evan James Squire. Varun Srikanth. Jiahui Sun. Divya Lakshmi Tamil Salvin. Tasvia Tasnim. Chek Chuambu Yumbi. Woo! 
Daniel Christopher Tam. Japlene Kaur Tyne. Deepti Tamandram. Clara Patricia Thompson. Mackenzie Ireland Thorpe. Alexandra Marina Todd. Catherine Grace Toy. Daniel Anthony Tran. Rachel Tu. Victoria Marilyn Tyndall. Amna Osmani. Ben Aditi Venkutraman. Natasha Joanna Verhoff. Isha Verma. Shangari Vijay Thira. Sophie Alexandra von Teichmann Lohushin. Rachel Yuxin Wong. Vincent Wang. Jade C.O.U. Wang. Yanbo Wang. Aaron Walter Wen. Catherine Wilkinson. Chi Yi Stephanie Wong. Nicole Charmaine Wu. Karina Yan. Serena Hui Yi Yang. Shuo Tong Yu. Sophie Madeline Beatrice Zarb. Amy Ji Yi Zhang. Kayla Yingxi Zhang. Sophia Ji Yi Zhang. Yangbo Zhang. Wendy Yuan Zhang. Angela Zhu. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Health Sciences. Catherine Lakshmi Bhargava. Marzan Hamid. Karen Chan. Well done. Let's give one more round of applause to the graduates of the class of 2022. I would like now to introduce you to Ms. Jacqueline Renchema, a graduate of the degree Master of Public Health, who will be delivering the valedictory address.
Good afternoon, Chancellor Smith, President and Vice Chancellor Farrar, Dean and Vice President O'Byrne, university and faculty leaders, and honorary degree recipient, Dr. Jimmy Vomink. Good afternoon also to friends, family, faculty, and most importantly, the class of 2022. My name is Jacqueline Rinchema, and I am honored to be this year's FHS valedictorian. For Faculty of Health Sciences students, the past two years have been challenging. Our time at McMaster University has trained us to critically evaluate and use the best available research evidence to advocate for evidence-based and equitable change in policy and practice. We've been trained and mentored by those who are at the forefront of the pandemic response and health innovation. But with great knowledge comes great responsibility. And at a time of peak misinformation and undervaluing of research evidence, we've had to have difficult conversations with friends and family members while speaking up against science misinformation. All while working tirelessly on the front lines of a healthcare system under strain, contributing to health research, and advocating loudly for an equitable public health response, even when it seems like our voices are the minority. But FHS students have risen to the challenge. Over the past two years of my degree, I've witnessed the resilience of my peers and been amazed at FHS students' drive for improving individual and population health outcomes, reducing health inequities, and spearheading innovation. FHS students are locally and globally minded, interested in affecting health change in our communities and internationally, working to advance a cause that is bigger than ourselves. All admirable aspirations that also advance McMaster University's mission of a brighter world. Although our degree experiences may not have looked exactly how we envisioned them, and despite the personal setbacks, disappointments, and burnout we experienced, we remained committed to improving the health of those around us. We continued to show up every day to our classes with purpose, engaging in discussions on how we can cultivate health change and driving forward the research to make it happen. During my graduate degree, I felt this purpose and drive for health and innovation radiate from the FHS community. It was infectious, and what ultimately inspired me to start a national nonprofit organization focused on introducing youth to the field of public health sciences earlier in their academic trajectories. I know I'm not the only one here today with a story of starting an initiative during our degrees that aimed to make change in response to a gap or issue we identified and that aimed to leave the world in better condition than we found it in, no matter how big or how small the outcome. This is what makes me so proud to be a member of the FHS community. As FHS students, the impacts of our work are felt throughout the health system. We are delivering care to those most in need, researching and developing cures to diseases, conducting clinical trials, designing public health programs and interventions to improve the health of our communities, analyzing health policies, creating new technologies, and designing more efficient and cost-effective health services. We truly are current and future health system leaders. And no matter what health system challenges may come next, this is what our time at McMaster University has prepared us for. And I've never been more confident in the health workforce's ability to tackle emerging health crises than with the McMaster Faculty of Health Sciences graduates at the forefront. And I can't wait to see our continued and future contributions to building a brighter, healthier, and more equitable world. So please join me in congratulating the Faculty of Health Sciences graduating class of 2022 as we go out and make our mark in the health system. Thank you. I'd like to invite Dr. Farrar to the lectern to present the President's Award for Outstanding Contributions to Teaching and Learning 
to Dr. Sheila Harms. Would Dr. Sheila Harms please come forward? The President's Award for Outstanding Contributions to Teaching and Learning is granted to those educators who, through innovation and commitment, have significantly enhanced the quality of students' learning experience. It is my pleasure to present the President's Award for Outstanding Contributions to Teaching and Learning to Dr. Sheila Harms. Congratulations, Sheila. I encourage all of you to look at the QR code listed in your program to read all about Dr. Harms' outstanding contributions. Congratulations, Dr. Harms. I would now like with pleasure to call upon the Dean and Vice President of the Faculty of Health Sciences, Dr. Paul O'Byrne, who will deliver the Health Sciences Address. Chancellor Smith, President Farrar, Professor Volming, guests, and of course, most importantly, members of the McMaster class of 2022. Thank you for the immense privilege of speaking to you this afternoon at Convocation. It is a particular pleasure for me to speak today at our first in-person Convocation since 2019. It is unnecessary for me to enumerate the many profound impacts that the COVID pandemic has had in every aspect of our lives, but it is necessary for me to recognize the extraordinary efforts that have been made by all our faculty, our staff, our students, which has allowed us to be together today at Convocation. You are a graduating class that is almost unique in the history of McMaster University in the challenges you have faced. And I offer my most sincere congratulations on having achieved your goal of graduating today. I believe the most important lesson learned from the COVID pandemic is the importance of reliance on science in both decision-making and developing tools to end the pandemic. In this regard, McMaster's Faculty of Health Sciences has been a world leader. An example of this impact is a brilliant idea developed by Dr. Frank Graham, working with the late Dr. Lud Previk in the late 1980s, to use adenoviruses to insert genetic information into cells to change the way they function. Now this idea was originally developed to treat malignant cells, but doctors Graham and Previk quickly recognized the potential for this approach to instruct cells to develop antibodies against viruses, thereby creating vaccines. In addition, they developed a cell line the HEK293 cell, which were the only cells that these viral vectors could grow in. This unique design, combining adenoviruses deleted of genes required for oncogenic transformation, with a cell line containing the genes essential for adenoviral replication, is not only ingenious, but makes adenoviral vectors safe for use in humans. Now, nearly half a century after the development of adenoviral vectors and the HEK293 cell here at McMaster, this approach has been the foundation for vaccines that have accounted for more than 2 billion doses administered worldwide. 
This example is only one of many exceptional contributions made by the McMaster community in the fight against COVID. McMaster has, for example, led the Canadian efforts to isolate, purify, and culture the COVID-19 virus for study. We have delivered innovative work on vaccine-related blood clots and on the development of the first inhaled coronavirus vaccine. We co-lead the Canadian Network for Modeling Infectious Diseases, and we host the COVID-19 Evidence Network. Beyond the Faculty of Health Sciences, our colleagues around campus have dedicated their talents to everything from developing new PPE to deploying innovative approaches to online learning. However, the most irreplaceable contribution that has been made that, that has allowed it to be possible for us to gather in person today for convocation is yours. You bore the full brunt of the pandemic and you are the first graduating class to cross this stage into what we hope is an increasing post-pandemic world. You will also be a generation of McMaster alumni to become health professionals in a society divided into factions, standing for and against credible evidence. Credibility and evidence are, of course, the foundation of everything we do here at McMaster. You are, after all, graduates of the faculty that develop the concepts of evidence-based medicine. You will be at the forefront of the effort to address disinformation and false claims about health science. There has been a very recent urgent health advisory released by the Surgeon General in the United States on the very severe negative effects of medical disinformation. And in a world where social media has so much impact, this in disinformation can have vast reach, which it would not have had a decade ago. One example of this is a recent report which has identified that the majority of the most followed 400 antiviral social media accounts with almost 60 million users is operated by only 12 individuals. Combating this disinformation is challenging and difficult and can only be done with the confidence in the pivotal role of the very best quality evidence plays in our medical decision making. Today we justifiably look back and celebrate your accomplishments, but we also know the greatest benefits of your efforts await you in the future. You should have deep confidence in your abilities, your stamina, your agility, and your resilience. You will almost certainly need all these attributes, but this class can look back on its path to graduation with a profound sense of achievement. Now it is time for you to embrace your next challenge. Whatever it is, it will be a challenge for which you are eminently well prepared. This is a special convocation for a unique graduating class. Your McMaster family, as well as your own families, are very proud of you. Congratulations and thank you once again for everything you have endured and contributed to graduate today. Thank you. Thanks very much, Paul. May I now introduce Zainab Hoaja, a graduate from the Bachelor of Health Sciences, class of 2017, and a representative of the McMaster Alumni Association, who will deliver the Alumni Association Address. <laughs> Chancellor Smith, President Farrar, award winners, honorees, faculty, fellow alumni, guests, and especially members of the class of 2022. It's been five years 
since I last stood at this podium at my own convocation, delivering the valedictory address to the class of 2017. A lot has changed since then, and yet my message remains essentially the same, connection. When I reflect on my time as a student here at McMaster, what I remember most are the connections I made that remain with me to this day. I remember staying up late with my friends, editing each other's assignments. I remember the times I didn't feel like I deserved help, but it was offered to me anyway with kindness and grace. I remember the mentors who helped me see my own potential and the instructors who offered me extensions without needing detailed explanations. Support and connection are difficult and even scary to find. And that has perhaps never been more true than it is for your cohort during this pandemic. But connection and support are things that we all need, whether we know it or not. Connection reminds us that we are never as alone as we sometimes feel we are. Support helps us grow into the version of ourselves that we want to be, not just the version we feel we should be. Those of, you convocating, those of you who just convocated today are the future leaders, change makers, researchers, and healthcare professionals of our society. I hope that each and every one of you is brave enough to ask for help and reach out for connection because you're certainly going to need it as you take on the world's challenges moving forward. And I hope that you always remember that you deserve it. And on that note, I'd like to very subtly segue into talking about some of the supports and connections available to you all through the McMaster Alumni Association. As new grads, you're all members of MAC10, which supports alumni in the first 10 years after graduation. Whether you need help getting your first job or navigating the next steps in your career, the Alumni Association has an amazing career counselor that I encourage you to take advantage of. There are also countless events, networking opportunities, mentoring and programming that you can access online from anywhere, live or on demand at your leisure. And as you continue to enter the scary world of adulting, we can also connect you to exciting things like preferred rates on homes and auto insurance, or health, or health and dental coverage. And if your path takes you away from Hamilton, as I imagine many of yours will, there may still be McMaster alumni events nearby. We have Canadian centers from Victoria to Halifax and in international cities around the world. As long as you keep your contact information up to date on your alumni profile at alumni.mcmaster.ca, <laughs> you'll always be invited and you'll always remain part of this community. When you leave convocation today, hopefully not too long after this speech, I know that I will not be your most significant memory of this day, but hopefully some echo of it will linger in the back of your mind in those moments when you inevitably find yourself wanting or needing connection and support. And whether it's two weeks or 20 years from now, if you ever find yourself wanting to reconnect with, with McMaster, we'll be here, happy to help you along your journey. And so members of the class of 2022, congratulations and well done on your convocation. We're so proud to welcome you to the McMaster Alumni Association family. Thank you. Well done, Zainab, thank you. I now invite our president and vice chancellor, Dr. Farrar, back to the podium to deliver his presidential address. Chancellor Smith, distinguished guests, award winners, faculty members of McMaster community, members of the McMaster graduating class, friends and family. For more than two years, we've dealt with an unwelcome guest in our lives, a global pandemic that has reminded us of how fragile our lives really are and how much we need to be together. Members of the graduating class, for two years, you have worked through the isolation, 
the disruption and possibly even health challenges and personal losses created by COVID-19. In spite of the very challenging conditions for completing coursework and other requirements for your degree, you have persevered. And so I want to congratulate each of you for your ability to adapt and thrive and succeed. 60 years ago, Dr. Harry Thode, who was president of McMaster University for less than a year at that time, attended a lecture given by the chair of medicine at the University of Toronto. He heard the chair, Dr. K.J.R. Whiteman, criticize medical education as being too obsessively rote. Whiteman argued that education should inspire an understanding and a love for people, a sense of responsibility, and a sense of proportion. Thode had been experimenting with progressive learning strategies since he arrived at McMaster as a faculty member two decades before that, and he was electrified by Whiteman's criticism of medical education. By 1967, Thode's hand-picked team of revolutionary medical educators was designing a new curriculum for a brand new medical school. This approach, now known as problem-based learning, would, in the words of the historian James Greenlee, reverberate around the world. It was a moment in medical education that earned McMaster a global reputation, and it polished the value and the prestige of every McMaster degree, including yours. There will likely be a time in the years ahead when you'll be struck by an idea, something new or radical, something that others may think is a little crazy. I hope when that time comes that you are ready, as Thode was, to identify the moment and to seize it. That means being ready based on what you've learned and to continue to learn actively and widely. It means maintaining a wide range of interests and connections, especially those in areas outside of your discipline. I've always been impressed by the fact that Harry Thode was a geologist and a nuclear chemist who was at a university without a medical school, and yet he found inspiration in a talk given by a physician from another university. My hope is that you will be ready, as Thode was and as McMaster has been, to continue to look for radical solutions for big problems and to seize big opportunities. I hope that you will continue to find ways to do, seeing, to do things differently, to be inspired by others, to find allies, and to work collaboratively on the most intractable problems. Congratulations on arriving at Convocation despite the extra obstacles in your path over the last two years. You should be proud, as I am, of your achievements, and you should be excited, as I am, about your next steps. Welcome to the worldwide community of McMaster alumni. I now invite our Chancellor, Santi Smith. Yahweh, everyone, for your beautiful words and inspiration. Yoyanale, I think I described that before. I'm not sure. I've done a few complications now. But Yoyanale in Gaingeha means, translates to mean well done or good job. So I want to say Yoyanale to all of the graduates. Congratulations to the class of 2022. I myself am a McMaster alumna. And I look forward to seeing where you go from here. McMaster has a way of keeping us connected and calling us back for different reasons, research, collaborations, friendships. So I want to uh, say please come back and continue to honor those relationships that you've built. And you're always welcome. Jacqueline, congratulations on all of your achievements. As Ms. Uh, Kawa just uh, eloquently said, you are now all graduates and members of the wonderful group of alumni, the McMaster alumni family. Dr. David Farrar, you've given us a lot to think about. And I know I personally will remember your words of wisdom. Graduates, take those wise words with you as you go. 
My very best wishes to you all. Now in closing, I have a few final announcements. Immediately following the reception, I encourage all graduates and their guests to make their way to the mezzanine level where a number of photo opportunities have been set up for you. Finally, I would ask that you remain standing at your seats until the academic procession and graduates have left the hall. Please join in the singing of the national anthem after the singing of the anthem. The convocation stands adjourned. <laughs>